But let's have a look at how we can create our own VDBs. Let's go over and have a look at EmberGen because that's one of the programs that can create VDBs. So you get that from here, from jangafx.com. And under downloads, you can have the EmberGen real-time fluid simulations. That's the one that we need. 14-day trial version. Fill it out and then a download will start that you can use for two weeks. It looks more complicated and scary than it really is. And this is true for our 3 ds wrap as well. When I saw that for the first time, I was thinking, I don't know what to do. And it's actually, it's not that bad at all. So let me give you the guided tour. On the left-hand side here, we have the viewport. With Alt, left click and drag, you can wander around it. And by default, mouse wheel scroll zooms in. And I think Alt and middle click just moves it around a bit like in Blender. Alt, middle click, and then you just pan. Alt, left click, you move around here. And then mouse button just you know scrolls in and out. It also tells you this at the bottom here. No matter which window you hover over, if I hover over the viewport here, bottom, it shows you how you're supposed to navigate the viewport. It comes up with this configuration because this is the default emitter, I suppose, the default kind of project. So you need both an emitter and simulation properties, and you need some kind of a surface from which all these things are created. If either of these are missing, then you won't see anything. And likewise, you need a lot of other nodes that make this display in the viewport as it does right now. So uh, much like in R3DS wrap, we have the viewport here and we have the node graph up here. And then each node that I'm selecting has different options that show up here on the bottom. And the cool thing is most of these nodes aren't actually all that difficult. It's a little bit like you used it from Unreal Engine, perhaps. I can left click and drag around a bunch of nodes and then lift click and drag, just move them away. And I'm doing this deliberately with these nodes because those are the ones we're not really interested in, which is kind of nice. These are all related. So left click and drag just around it and then press C for comment, much like in Unreal Engine. And I'm just going to call this whole group here render or rendering. So all these nodes are really only there to give us a visual representation of this thing in the viewport. So it contains things like uh, light and directional light and the skybox. I can these little um, icons here. Let me switch these things off. So if I go and click this to off, then any of these things are being removed, like the ground, if I don't want to see the ground, so I can do that. That's kind of that's kind of neat. But these are really only there to show this thing up so that we have something in the viewport to look at. Whereas the ones in the front here, those are only four nodes and they're not actually that difficult to understand. We've got the shape, which is the donut here. If I switch that off, everything stops. I've also got a noise node here that I can also disable. So if I look at the, the way the fire is built now, if I don't add noise to it, it's all very linear and there's nothing that's disturbing it. That's just how the emitter works on the volume. If I switch noise on, then there's a bit of variation in there. And if I wanted to make that stronger or less strong or change that in some way, then I can fiddle with the parameters on the bottom here. Much like here with the primitive cylinder here. If I don't want this to be a torus, if I want this to be something else like a like a box, I can use that and I can change the size of the box on the bottom here, or I can make it uh, maybe a cylinder or whatnot. So all these things are possible just to change the shape of the emitter and hence the shape of the particles that come out. Likewise with the noise, I can fill with those parameters here. We'll, we'll look at those in a moment. Then we have the emitter itself, and that's kind of the one of the more important factors. It lets me set things like how much fuel is being burned, as an example. So if I crank that parameter up here from fuel rate, if I turn that all the way down to zero, then nothing's being burned. So there's just a bit of smoke that's being emitted. But if I crank the fuel rate up to something you know drastic, then I can see that this thing really, really turns on fire here. Adjusting these values is a bit like adjusting them in Blender. So you can left click them and that makes kind of a coarser change. But if you go and hold shift while you do that, there's much, there's a much smaller change. So you have the option to dial in parameters a bit more accurately that way. Then I can change the smoke emissions. If I wanted more smoke, I can just go dial that up and it's, it's a lot of more smoke. Or I can just turn the smoke completely off and then that would do that. There shouldn't be any more smoke once the smoke is all dissipated. This happens 
continuously. So all these things will be created much like a regular particle system. They're created continuously. But if you go and hit R, then you know you can you can see that it kind of resets. So if you made a change and you want to see what does this look like when you start from scratch, and this is what happens. Likewise, space is like a regular animation. You can just go and halt whatever your thing does and just stop it. You can also use that in combination with R. I haven't found a way to step forward yet, so it's not the cursor keys. Uh, there's, there's these ones here. I suppose you can do that. You can also keyframe any of these values. So if you have found that you want to move your primitive while it's emitting stuff, then you can do that. There's animation properties in here as well. But yeah, that, those are things that you can do on the emitter. There's also under activity here, currently we're having a duration or burst of 0.5 seconds and we have time between bursts is zero so it's, these particles are being generated all the time but i can also set the time between bursts to something like one second and then i can see that for half a second every one second something happens with the parameters that i set and depending on the parameters that you have this is how you can create these little you know bursts and little explosions and puffs of smoke and alka seltzer effects and stuff i think maybe We'll use something else like a if i'm going to go and make something like a puff of smoke that would come from a plane for example you know i would go change this from a cylinder to actually i'm going to leave the cylinder and i'm just going to reduce the size of the cylinder uh, with height so height instead of four meters i'm going to make that point one and then it's just a flat disc here so we have less surface that's why my effect isn't quite as pronounced right now but that's cool i can go and compensate that with parameters on the emitter now so if i'm if i'm happy with that or maybe i want this to be uh, one second long so it, it emits something a little bit longer that might be kind of neat but it's also not you know not as strong as i maybe want it to be so i can go to maybe emission and have the fuel rate crank up to maybe 100 there's a lot more that's being burned in that one second there and maybe also the smoke rate i'd like for that to be you know a lot more smoke sweet so that's kind of a puff of smoke that we're generating if i want that to be faster than under activity i'll just go and turn this down to maybe 0.3 so there's like you know something happening for a shorter duration or maybe 0.5 was actually a 0.7 that would be that'd be another nice little thing but it's not quite big enough maybe we want this to be even bigger so i go and, and create uh, just add the fuel rate there's also temperature emission i could make this thing a lot hotter as it emits stuff or just you know more fuel there we go now that looks like a boom that looks like a great explosion <laughs> it's almost like now i need more time in between the bursts so now i have one burst going into the other so that under activity i'd say maybe time between bursts maybe we'll set that to five and then we'll have a little bit more time r will reset that from the beginning and that's kind of nice so that about 200 frames 240 frames yeah maybe if i'm thinking that over maybe 160 frames that'd be a good effect let me go and type that in here under duration 160 so that we have this this whole duration thing here I think I like that. 